Hey guys, Bill Merwell here, and welcome back to this could be considered part .5 of NASCAR The Game Inside Line. Last part, we basically walked off of the win in the Budweiser shootout. We're going to go down and qualify and make this a two race in one video. Daytona, probably the one of the many problems I have to use golf with these Technics games is um, uh, you can pull away if they're restricted flight tracks. And not, like, pull away from the gap a little bit. No, you can clear them. You saw back in this shootout how I had, like, an eight-second gap on everybody. It's pathetic, in my opinion. But then again, this game is the shittiest NASCAR game I've ever played, so... We're going to do, uh... Six laps today for the Gatorade Jewels. No practice time, yada, yada, yada. Let's go. The Daytona Jewels decide the qualifying field for the Great American Race, the Daytona 500. Let's uh, jump right into qualification. We probably won't get much in the way of a good qualifying spot, so I expect to fight through five bit of track on Thursday. Thank you, Ray Abraham. Welcome to a five mile, mile trek of speed. Figure out who gets to start where for the Daytona Duels. And of course, hide the DuPont scheme. I was going to see if I can change it to the normal ARP scheme, but it turns out you can't change schemes and paint schemes mid season. The game already does it for you, which really is bullshit, in my opinion. So, um, because Inside Line let you do it, um, I'm sorry, EA Games let you do it. You could switch schemes in Thunder 04 and all the Thunder games. You could do it in 14. I mean, I'm sure it's probably just going to be a minor nitpick of mine, but what really pisses me off is this game did not get any testing that it deserved. Any testing. One thing you probably noticed on the strict plate tracks is really hard to hold your line. And I mean, it is um, really hard to hold your line. You're going to be bobbing left and right in the corners. We come through the trial. Well, now to start our first lap. We got to get quicker than Greg Biffle with a time of 53.12. So far, we're on, on our way to a pretty good lap right now. Jeff Gordon has no stranger success here at the World Center of Racing. We come down the backstretch. Back, he is a three-time winner in the Daytona 500, but lately, the streaky plates haven't been so kind to Big Daddy, Jeff Gordon. The Big Daddy of NASCAR, Jeff Gordon. With poor, poor finishes constantly, with the best finish of eighth being at Talladega in 2011. Or sixth or whatever. Coming out of turn four, we're tracking pretty good. We are all, we're cruising through the trial. We're going to blow Biffle's time way out of the water with a time of 48.13. Pretty good lap, I, if I say so myself. We're almost 190 miles an hour into the corner by ourselves. Basically, what I do is kind of a strategy I adopted for this game since the car bobs left and right frequently is when there's no cars to the left or right, I usually just snake down in a corner. On the, on the straightaways, I snake a lot. Whoa, God. I snake quite a bit into the corners. Now we're coming out of turn four, proving we had a really good lap here. And it looks like we are going to get... We are going to start on pole for dual one. We are going to start on pole, pole and um, dual one. Let's no. Let's take a look at the qualifying. Me and Greg Biffle are going to start in the front row. Clint Boyer and Paul Menard are going to be in row two. Matt Kenseth and Jimmy Johnson are in row three. Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Jeff Burton are in row four. Casey Kane and Carl Edwards are in row five. And then look on down to the rest of the field. 
Anybody who is in an odd-numbered position will be in duel number one. Anybody who is in an even-numbered position will be in duel number two. Let's go down to the duels and Ray Abraham. Not long before the race starts, champ. You want to get a few more practice laps in or test the car setup? Now would be a good time. Let's go down to the Gatorade Duels, probably one of the most stressful races of the Speed Weeks. The Gatorade, one, Gatorade 150. It's going to be a two six-lap sprint, sprint races to set the starting grid for the Daytona 500. Here's Mike Joy and Daryl Waltrip. There's going to be two races in one video, so expect the 500 to be uploaded here, too. The Daytona Duels determine the starting order for the Daytona 500. You'll want to get as good a position as you can on the grid, so give it all you've got out there. Let's go to Mike Joy and Daryl Walter. Take it away, boys. It's time to set the starting lineup for the Daytona 500 with a pair of 150-mile qualifying races. The Duel at Daytona. I'm Mike Joy with Daryl Walter. Mike, these races are fun because the driver has no responsibility. Don't wreck the car. Go out there and get some information to kind of prepare for the Daytona 500. So go out there, drive smart, and go by the way, try to win. This is the opportunity. Jeff Gordon and Clint Boyer are going to be on the front row for duel number one. Or load up and go home. Who will. It's time to set the stage for the Daytona 500 with a pair of two races. Jeff Gordon and Clint Boyer on the front row. Dale Jr. and Matt Kensler in row two. Pace car is off. And we are green at Daytona. For six laps in duel number one. My goal here is just to finish because I know the AI is going to pull some bullshit. Pull some stupid shit too. Three wide behind me for the second spot. Casey Kane down on the inside lane. Matt Kens is in the middle. Clint Boyer to the outside. Three lanes to block going into turn number three. So just to make this race interesting, I'm just going to basically rate, smash the brake and the gas. And it's out of turn four. Here comes our new Hendrick Motorsports teammate, Casey Kane, coming to, trying to come to our bumper, but he's got... Juan Pablo Montoya with him. Coming through trial now. I lead the first lap here at Daytona. David Stremme gets the fast lap. Fast lap. Wow, look at that. Casey Kane and Montoya have hooked. Juan Pablo Montoya have hooked up. Now Casey Kane's got, I believe, Clayton Boyer in the 15 behind him. But I'm still holding a pretty good gap on everybody. So we head down the back. Could this be a caught on a practice race I did at Daytona? This caution three practically all race. Coming to now let's look at the onboard. This is probably the safest onboard I can go from without racking. Out of nowhere, here comes Martin Trux Jr. to take the top spot with Tony Stewart behind him. Oh, God. On the outside lane, the outside lane seems to have better momentum with Clint Boyer and Dale Hart Jr. behind us. Truex and Stewart down the inside. I'm going to try to back up to whoever's in the middle lane. Looks like possibly could be Landon Castle. Looks like Denny Hamlin. Three wide for second. Out of no... Look at that. I have no help whatsoever. If they are side by side. Come down, oh! And around goes Casey Kane through the trial. He smacks the wall. I lock it down. Unfortunately, look at that. Just because of crap like that, this is going to be a pretty long season. I locked the brakes down. I just yeah, hit the brakes and locked it down. 
So, Denny Hamlin and Brad Keselowski have hit it for fuel. Basically means we got two laps left in scheduled distance this afternoon. Here in the Gatorade 150, first, second caution of this second, third ever caution of this let's play. Here we go. Martin Trex Jr. leads duel here at Daytona for duel number one. Of course, we are in the same situation that we were in here in the shootout. And look at that. I passed, like, everybody on the back stretch. Could probably be the same thing here. Look at that. Three wide. Amarola is going to fan out here. Whoa. Four wide. Around we go. Oh, okay, yeah. That's stupid. I know rewinding makes you look like a sissy, but I'm going to use rewinds unless it's absolutely commendable. Look at that. Four wide. Here we come. We passed multiple cars right here. It looks like uh, Lanny Castle is now on Tony Stewart's bumper. Bumper coming through three and four. He could walk away with a win here in his first ever Gatorade duel. In the 83 car for BK Racing. Through the trial now. Tony Stewart is with him. Both Gordon and Stewart are no stranger to success here at here at Daytona, Stewart has won Gatorade Duel, Budweiser Shootout, and even the Daytona Summer Races. Here comes Stewart to the inside. To the lead. But can I get there? Whoa. Look at that. Everyone fanning out. It's like a normal race through nearby racetrack. Truex, Stewart, one side by side coming down the back. But do I get him here? Coming through three and four. Truex and Stewart battling for the win here at they the second at Daytona. But it looks like I get the lead here. Give them the entire outside lane. They're not they're not gonna get a run. I win the Gatorade duel Gatorade one twenty five here at Daytona. That was awesome, buddy. You just earned a place on the front row for the great American race. Well, I was going to be on there anyway. So, uh, while you're here, let's look at the unofficial results. I win today at Daytona. Tony Stewart is second. Landon Castle is third. Good run for the new BK Racing. Shrek's Jr. is fourth. Eric Amarillo is fifth. Kyle Busch, sixth. Matt Kenz is seventh. Juan Pablo Montoya, eighth. Ernst Jr., ninth. And Clint Boyer, tenth. Down through the rest of the field. Casey Kane was the only car to finish last. Everyone else finished. Everybody finished the race. No points. So, um, tune in, tune in in a few days for the Daytona 500. Tune in next. Tune in in a few days for the running of the Daytona 500 on NASCAR The Game Inside Line. See you then.